Here on Earth, we're always concerned with the weather. Okay, Google, am I going to need an umbrella tomorrow? No, rain is not expected tomorrow in Courtney. The forecast is 20 degrees and partly cloudy. It's pronounced Courtney. But fine, what if I lived on the moon? Okay, Google, am I going to need an umbrella tomorrow on the moon? Let's take Google's silence for uncertainty. The names of geological features on the moon sure evoke mental images of weather. There's the Ocean of Storms, also known as Oceanus Prolisarum, or the Ocean of Clouds, aka Mare Nubium. In fact, most of the regions on the moon are named after oceans. It's got to count for something, right? They get these names because the early astronomers thought they were actual oceans on the moon. They imagine vast seas where heroic six-legged creepy bug people plied the icy waves seeking fame, fortune, and lunar plunder. I don't know, like gold cheese or something. Seriously, they were making a lot of this stuff up until telescopes were invented. But when the NASA astronauts finally set foot on the moon, they knew they wouldn't need to pack their snorkeling gear because there weren't any oceans on the moon or really any atmosphere. The moon is almost as dead and lifeless as space itself. The storms we see battering the astronauts on every Mars science fiction story just can't happen on the moon because there's no air up there. There's an ongoing lethal radiation solar wind blowing from the sun and deep space, but nothing you'd be able to windsurf to. So why isn't there an atmosphere on the moon? Well, it all comes down to gravity. The moon has about 1% of the mass of the earth, which means that it doesn't have enough gravity to hold on to any gas atmosphere. Anything that it did have would have been blown away by the solar wind billions of years ago. In fact, we did a whole episode on what it would take to terraform the moon, and it turns out you'd need to constantly replenish the atmosphere. In fact, this is one of the reasons why the Martian atmosphere is so thin. It was probably thicker in the past, but the solar wind stripped off all the lighter atmosphere long ago. Now it's just 1% the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere. Now I've said that the moon has almost no atmosphere, but that almost no means partly yes. There is in fact an incredibly thin atmosphere surrounding the moon, which measures about a hundred trillionth the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere. Now there are a few sources of this atmosphere. First, there's volcanic outgassing that comes from the moon. This contributes a little helium and radon. And then there's the constant micrometeorite bombardment that kicks up pulverized lunar regolith. But perhaps the strangest atmospheric feature is a storm that does rage across the surface of the moon, right at the terminator, the exact line between the moon's day side and its night side. It turns out the day side of the moon is positively charged, and the night side is negatively charged. As the terminator moves, the polarity of the dust flips and drives it sideways. In fact, the astronauts who walked on the moon actually reported seeing this. They saw bands or twilight rays in the sky around lunar sunrise or sunset. So without a thick atmosphere, the surface of the moon just doesn't have any appreciable weather, and definitely doesn't have storms like we have on Earth. Mark Watney will need some other reason than weather to be stuck behind on the moon. So do you have any more questions about the moon? Let's hear them and I'll include them in future episodes. In our next episode, we wonder what's outside the universe, and in doing so, directly contradict previous episodes of the Guide to Space. Trust me, it's all very confusing. Oh, and make sure you stick around for the blooper. Our Patreon community sees entire blooper reels, gets advanced access to all our videos, and sees no ads on Universe Today. Join the club of 500 amazing people who support us in making great space and astronomy content. The people who make these shows even possible. We'd like to thank Tom, Eric, Ovison, Luis, and Paul Gracie, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with me and the rest of the team. Want to get in on the action? 
go to patreon.com slash universe today. But when the NASA astronauts finally set foot on the moon, they may think, oh.